American troops ordered to be ready to deploy as Israel prepares for a ground invasion of Gaza. That could begin at any moment. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin putting select U.S. forces on standby, saying they have 24 hours notice should Israel need them. The Wall Street Journal reporting that around 2,000 troops could be tasked with advising and medical support and would not have combat roles. And as that news breaks this afternoon, the fighting continues to rage between Israel and Hamas for a 10th straight day. Israeli forces striking the terrorists from the air. And Iranian-backed terror group Hezbollah has been firing at Israeli military bases along its border with Lebanon. Iran has been threatening to intervene if Israel goes through with their ground offensive in Gaza. But President Biden says Tehran better not do it. Is Iran behind the Gaza war? I don't want to get into classified information, but to be very blunt with you, there is no clear evidence of that. Iran constantly supports Hamas and Hezbollah. I don't mean that. But in terms of where they... Did they have foreknowledge? Did they help plan the attack? They, they, there, there's no evidence of that at this point. What is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran? Don't. Don't, don't, don't. And Netanyahu directly linking Iran to the Hamas terror attacks. Hamas is an axis of evil of Hezbollah, Hamas and Iran, and those who do work for them. Their goal is to destroy Israel and murder us all. And as Israel preps an all-out assault on Hamas, President Biden is now calling for some restraint. Do you believe that Hamas must be eliminated entirely? Yes, I do. But there needs to be a Palestinian authority. There needs to be a, a path to a Palestinian state. Would you support Israeli occupation of Gaza at this point? I think it'd be a big mistake. Look, what happened in Gaza, in my view, is Hamas and the extreme elements of Hamas don't represent all the Palestinian people. And of course, we have over 30 Americans killed in this attack, Jesse, and there are Americans amongst the 200 hostages that are be still being held. Is Pelly the president or is Joe Biden the president? And why is Pelly jumping in into these answers and trying to fill words into the president's mouth? Let the president say what he means when he says, don't. Why is he jumping down the guy's throat and, like, helping him out? I want to hear from the president. I don't want to hear from Pelly. Uh, I don't think we can have a Palestinian state at this point. I've had it with the Palestinians. I've given up on the Palestinians. If I was in Israel, I wouldn't be talking about a Palestinian state right now. I don't think Joe Biden should be talking about a Palestinian state right now. And I don't like how people tried to differentiate between the Palestinians and Hamas. To me, I see people with guns. That's Hamas. The people without the guns are the Palestinians. They believe the same thing. The Palestinians hire Hamas to run their government. You pull them, they all love killing Jews. It's in their charter. They say they believe in suicide bombings. Every time a Palestinian refugee goes to another country, it doesn't work out so well for the other country and for those Palestinians. No one wants them. You don't see Egypt opening up their doors. You don't see Jordan opening up. You don't see the Saudis. Why don't they want the Palestinians, Dana? I think we all know why they don't want the Palestinians, and it's not working out having these Palestinians and Hamas right next door to the Israelis. So time is running out for Netanyahu. I don't know why they're taking so long with this ground offensive. I would have struck, obviously. I have no military experience. <laughs> yeah. But I'm talking about there's a certain amount of goodwill that's built up. There's a certain amount of political capital that the West will allow Netanyahu in the wake of this horrific attack. Every day that goes by and they don't move in on the ground and root out these terrorists and their little labyrinth under and, and the command and control, the decapitation strikes, it's another day where the United Nations, where the Arab League and some of these skittish uh, American politicians are going to say, you know what, let's have a ceasefire. Let's, let's just wait, Let, you know, let's stop, let's just stop. And if they don't go in hard and they don't go in decisively and they don't have the time to go in and root out these terrorists, then they're not going to do it. And then we're going to be back again five years later. There's going to be another horrific attack here. Now, Joe Biden has to put a stronger point on the Iran deal. Why can't he say that the intelligence shows that they had preplanned knowledge and 
probably a hand in the attack because I don't believe him when he says that there's no intelligence pointing to that. Notice the language he used, Dana. He said there's no clear intelligence. So he's couching it. He doesn't want to say it because that means he has to deal with it, and that means he's responsible for it since we've been funding this stupid country for that long. I don't like the way this commander-in-chief has handled this entire thing, and I don't feel very comfortable now. We have a land war in Europe, and we have another hot war in the Mideast, and we have a wide-open border, and he's sitting back, and, and he's just saying, don't. Don't what, Joe? Don't what? And there's a possibility, Judge, of another front in the north on the border with Hezbollah, I'm sorry, with Lebanon, Lebanon. where right. Hezbollah is really dug in deep. Right, right. And uh, the Israelis, in fact, are uh, evacuating some of the Israelis in the north uh, because of the attack from Hezbollah. Uh, look, look, there, look, first of all, let's get one thing straight, okay? I don't care what Joe Biden says, all right? Whether or not uh, Israel does not want Gaza, they made it clear within a few days of this attack by Hamas, all right? They don't want it. So, Joe Biden, don't even comment about it. You've got nothing to do with it. Secondly, the, <coughs> the, the, the distinction between Hamas and the Palestinians, and last week I talked about the history of Palestine. I talked about the fact that no other uh, uh, Arab country wants them. But right now, uh, they say a million Palestinians have moved from, Palestinians have moved from the northern part of Gaza and are moving down toward the south. They're trying, the, Israel's trying to negotiate in the United States with Egypt to let some of them in, okay? You, you can't really compare all of them to Hamas. You really can't. Uh, and believe me, I am no sympathizer here. In fact, I would say bomb them, bomb them, and then bomb them again. But you've got to understand that we're dealing with the kind of uh, prepping the battlefield. This is a different kind of battlefield. This is a country where there are tunnels underneath. Some of these tunnels, they cannot be struck but from the air. You've got to go in there, and this is the most dangerous urban kind of warfare. So we don't know what they've been doing, Jesse. And with things that are, you know, with a lot of the communications down, they literally have runners going in. Some are Arabs, some are, some are the Jews trying to find out what's going on and where everyone is, is, is located now. So there was a pause today. It wasn't a pause for the weather. Maybe it was a pause because Hamas said, don't bomb us and maybe we'll give you the hostages back. I don't think that's the case. I think the, pa the pause, according to the information I get, is a tactical pause. Machines, people need a rest, constant activities. You're loading bombs, fueling. You're getting new pilots in, uh, but they're going in, and they're going in hard. They know that, they are, that, they're, uh, that their existence depends on this. And let's be real clear. Under Trump, they, he, they, he broke down and made sure that they went broke as it related to the sanctions. Under Biden, he comes in, he lets them get all kinds of oil revenues. And the reason he can't say Iran is behind it is because he doesn't want to get into World War III with Iran. That's what's going on there, because somebody's going to drop a nuke here. I don't know who it is, but I don't want to watch it. Harold, over the weekend, there was a lot of talk about and concern about a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Then we find out this morning that yesterday, the U.N. relief was sent in with fuel and medical supplies for the Palestinians in Gaza, and it was stolen by Hamas. So we shouldn't be surprised by any of that. It's good to be back. Hope everybody had a good weekend. The, the world is a, is a dangerous place, and our, our, our presence and in, in, in involvement is, in, is essential to the stability, to bringing about stability and peace. I, I took your comments, Jesse, uh, at heart, and I understand where, where you may be coming from, but I would align probably more with the judge on some of the, some of the concerns, and, and you, you particularly mentioned the Palestinians and Hamas. Uh, it, is, it is probably easy and, and maybe likelier to conflate the two, but I think you have to separate the two because I don't think everyone, everyone is in Hamas. Two, this is what we tried to talk about last week when I was saying that <clears throat> I listened to the president and I was not, I uh, understood where he's coming from and gave him the benefit of the doubt because the World War III option is a very serious option, obviously. Uh, and if indeed there is an invasion from the northern border on, on, uh, with the Lebanese-Israeli uh, border, you're likely not only to need those 2,000 soldiers or troops that they've, uh, or that the, that the orders have been, deployment orders have been uh, given to by Secretary Austin, you may need more. My sources tell me that much of that is for, air, for pilots to be able to provide air support. <clears throat> but, Judge, you raised the point that's been raised over the weekend. I got to tell you, this Trey Yinks at Fox is unbelievable. I mean, the, the reporting this guy's doing uh, is, and John, Rob, really the whole team over there has, has, been, has, been, has been great. But this is, been, this is, been, this is happening in tunnels. 
I mean, this fighting is happening underground. This is a new kind of fighting. When you think about uh, the coalition that George H.W. Bush built in Kuwait, you think about the coalition that George W. Bush uh, did with, with Afghanistan and even Iraq, <clears throat> that's what President Biden is trying to do here, too. We don't do well in as, long, as much as we, since World War II in ground wars. We have all the technology in the world. No one can beat us in that. But this kind of warfare underground, we've never done before. Right. So I think we've got to think long and hard about if we do go in and level Gaza, what does that mean? How do you do that, number one? And two, if and when you do do it, do the Israelis then own Gaza? Are they responsible for... Uh, the Palestinian people or those who don't leave. So I think there are a number of questions that, that have not been answered. And I give President Biden a lot more credit uh, in terms of his thoughtfulness around this issue. Right before we came on, Greg, you can talk about anything you want, but I would just mention that it has been curious that there's been no sort of proof of life videos or wow. photographs. Uh, there was one today. They finally released one of a 24-year-old woman who is being held hostage. She was Israeli. They did not show any Americans. But the Americans are on... All of our minds as they figure out if they can try to find them. Mm -hmm. Greg, last word to you. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I notice how the media is pulling us into this inane back and forth game, which is meant to prevent Israel from exas exacting justice in an appropriate response. So a sensible person will say Israel must go in there, track down and kill Hamas. And then the media will say, but innocent people will be killed. And you, you would reply, that's not the goal. Our goal is to go after Hamas. And then the media will say, but look at the destruction. And then you say, but that's because Hamas has placed themselves among citizens and civilians. That's on them. And then the media will say, look at these atrocities. And then you go again, we aren't interested in collateral damage. That's on Hamas. We just want to get those people responsible for, for, for the atrocity that was committed against us. And then they will say, and they are saying this now, but it's not proportional. And that's what they're going to be saying. And your only response is, it's war. Mm -hmm. You know, and, it, and right now, you know, Israel has to restore its equilibrium by exacting the appropriate justice. Mm -hmm. And we should look forward. Harold, you were going, what's next? And I think that's the big question. What is next in the post-Hamas landscape? How can this be fixed? Can we now start over? If Hamas is no longer there, then you still have Hezbollah, but can we start over? Will there be other Arab countries that decide to cooperate together and take the lead with Israel to rebuild this region? I mean, we accept what must be done beforehand, and it's going to be grim. There's going to be risks in this war. It's going to be ugly. But unlike Hamas, Israel is not intending to hurt innocent civilians. This is not two sides of the same coin. All they're trying to do is exact justice by eradicating an evil that was bent on destroying them. So in a way, I mean, I, I feel like you should, we should step back and look ahead. What do, what's done is done. This is going to move forward. And now we have to start thinking about, well, what's next? Indeed. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.